everyone, I am Alison Wells and I am here today for our class with Exploring Our City Through Art. And the city we're talking about is New Bedford. So I'm going to be doing a series of videos doing fun examples and fun art projects of how we can express um, the history of our city, New Bedford. Now before I go on any of the field trips and we do examples of that, we are going to make art portfolios. So today, our class is about art portfolios. What is an art portfolio? Okay, it is a container or something that you hold all of your artwork in safely. In today's class, we are gonna make almost like a bag where we can put things in on envelope. Okay, so all of the artwork that we do in this class, we can keep it all in our portfolios. So a portfolio is a place where you can put all of your artwork together so you know where everything is. You can go and they're all there nicely, neat in that one area, as well as it is a place where you can keep your artwork safe. Because if you have your artwork all over the house, you know, it might break, it might tear, different things. But if you have it in all one place, that's a nice place for it. So we always start off with an art portfolio and then continue with our other projects. Okay, so let's get started. What we need for today is we're going to use one sheet of poster board. And they come in many different colors. I chose a pink one. This one actually uh, was used before. If you can see, right, we had things on it like posters and different papers mounted, different artwork mounted on it. You know, in art, I never waste any materials. So I can still use this. I don't need a brand new one. So just this is just an example. In case you have something at home, you think it's not perfect, that's okay. This part will go on the inside. We are using one sheet and we're folding it in half. Folding it in half and in that, when we fold it like that, then that means that the inside that didn't look very good could be covered up, all right? So maybe the ones you have don't have any blemishes, but if you have one that do, that's okay. We'll use it for the inside. So you need one sheet of poster board and you're gonna fold it in half. We also need duct tape. I'm gonna show you a way, if we don't have duct tape, what we can use. Remember, making art, we can always find an alternative. We can always find something to use. But in this one, we're gonna use duct tape. If you have any large rolls of duct tape, we can use that. And then I will also show you what you can use if you don't have duct tape. Pencils, if all you need is one pencil, an eraser, because you're gonna do um, sketches, etc. Um, a scissors, some glue, um, and then the other materials you use to decorate your portfolio, it's really up to you. You can use paint, um, pastels, oil pastels, chalk pastels, you can use markers, color pencils, um, paint pens, I love paint pens. They're like markers, but they have real paint in them and they're brilliant. They, they, they give you some really nice bright colors. So you can use all sorts of stuff. You can cut out images, pictures, and stick them on, which is called collage, paper collage, cutting out and sticking on paper onto another surface, paper collage. So as you see, I have my one sheet of poster board folded into half. Make sure edge to edge, and then you crease it. Fold it down and make sure it's creased. Pinch it at the edge, okay? So it's like this. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna seal one side and the other. We don't need to seal this side because this is where we fold it, okay? So it makes it quite easy. It's not like two pieces and we have to tape all three sides. And remember, the top is gonna be left open because that is where you're going to put your artwork. Okay. Now here's an example of one. No design on this side yet. 
a student did with the duct tape on the sides. The bottom doesn't need it, but sometimes we put the duct tape just for it to look uniform, beautiful. It's, it's really up to you. All right, so these two sides are the main sides that we're going to seal together. All right. So here is my duct tape. Some of you might need help. Sometimes you might need help from someone to hold it down so it doesn't stick. Because when you, and it's a little tough to pull. Look at this. All right? I'm going to pull, kind of measuring in my mind how much I need. So up to there is where I need. Now, you can cut it there or you can leave it. Sometimes I don't cut it right away because when I cut it when it's long, sometimes it falls back on itself and it sticks and it could really, you know, cause problems because then you might waste it. You might have to use another piece. So I'm just gonna put it here. If you have someone to help you, they can hold it for you while you take this corner. So this side, right, this is my um, envelope. This is my, my poster board cut in two. And I'm just gonna place it right on the middle. A middle, imagine there's a middle line right there. You're not going to do the whole side. You're doing middle so that it can fold over nicely. It can fold over nicely. Let me just pull a little more. I need it a little more, okay? So you can cut it and leave it. I like to put it there just in case it folds over on me. Right in the middle, so I will have enough. Okay, press it down. So I have enough here so I can turn over. Okay, good. Now I'm going to take my scissors and I cut carefully because the duct tape is sticky. So you know it sticks onto the scissors. So you just have to be careful with that because it sticks onto itself. And then, see? So easily I flip it over, both hands, and I try my best to smooth it out without any kinks. But sometimes you get a little fold or whatever, but that's okay. It's all in the charm of the piece, okay? Isn't duct tape lovely? <laughs> so easy to go, you know, it's sticky, you put it over. It's a little difficult in the stickiness of it, but once you get it right, it's so easy. I just clipped off a little excess and I'm gonna put another part there. See that? Good. And then we're gonna do the other side. So you'll take your duct tape. Now, if you have more than one pattern of a duct tape, you can use another one. You don't have to use the same one or you could use the same one and have it all uniformed, okay? So now you know how to use your duct tape to seal the edge. I'm going to show you another way. If you don't have duct tape, what about paper? Any kind of pattern paper, okay? Once it's large enough. And if it's not long enough, you could always piece it together, you know? Tape it together, glue it together, you know, put it together and then see what happens. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. So you're going to have a sheet, any kind of pattern paper, um, maybe it is even paper that you had from an art project and you had painted paper and you might cut a strip. So all you're going to do, you're going to use the same strip like you did with this, but it's not sticky. Okay. It's not sticky. So we will have to glue it. What I did on the inside part, I took my ruler and I use my pencil or my pen. I used a, a Sharpie for this so that you can see. And I just made a straight line and, and drew it down, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be very thick. Our mine is like an inch and a half. You can make it two inches, as thick as you want it. You might make it nice and thick over here, right? But it just needs to be thick enough so that you can fold it over, all right? So look what I'm going to do. Here I go. This is just any pattern paper you can find. You are going to cut a strip about two inches. Now don't be too caught up with how thick it is. You measure off how, how much you would like it to be, how thick you would like it to be, and then. The same thing here, right? 
half is going to go on top. Now remember, it is not sticky, so we need our glue. Oh, my glue is a little over here. Let me get it. And I'm back. All right, so stick glue is fine. You can use Elmer's glue or the school glue. And I am gluing the entire thing. Sometimes I like to glue on something else so it doesn't make my table sticky. So you can have a glue station or just a piece of paper underneath. Make sure those edges. I know a lot of students sometimes forget their edge. They just put a little dab, 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 but make sure all the edges have. Okay, I'm gonna put it back down, just like I did with my duct tape. Seeing that? And I'm gonna take this and do halfway. Estimate, but just make sure there's enough to fold over. As you can see, I have excess, so I will, I'll cut it off, but I'm gonna fold it over first. All right, look at that. Right, good. And now I can just snip off the edge. Be careful not to cut the portfolio. And here we have it, look. Okay, so this is an example of using the duct tape. If you don't have duct tape, no worries. You can use a piece of paper, pattern paper. You can just use plain paper or you can use colored paper, right? If it's not long enough, you can piece it together, stick it together, or put two colors together, right? Be creative. But the main thing is sealing these together, sealing them together. Sometimes I might do um, a staple, stapler, and then cover the staples. You don't wanna see the staples or you don't wanna feel it either. But this is pretty sturdy. But when I use just plain paper, and I um, plain or pattern paper, not the duct tape, I usually like to do the staples. And then I will put this over. Now, the duct tape is very durable, so we don't usually have to do um, the staples or that. Do you understand? Good, so that's it. Now, if you wanted extra, Another design, you can put it under here. You don't have to because look, it's already an envelope. This is where you put your art. So you can decide if you want another strip at the bottom, okay? Just like this person did here and had the strip at the bottom as well. Good, so now you know how to make your portfolio. It's as simple as that, as simple, as simple as that. You can also decide to put a handle um, and you can use rope or a nice sort of um, lacing or anything sturdy enough that you can uh, add as a handle. And I will show you an example of that, okay? But first, now we have to decide what we're gonna put on our portfolio. Now, what I like to do, I like to use one side, it's going to be personalized. One side is gonna be all about you, okay? All about you. What's your name? So you can have your name on one side, and maybe you could do a few items, drawings, designs that represent you, the things you like. What do you like, okay? That's one side, it's all about you. The other side, it's going to be the name of our program, which is Exploring My City Through Art. Exploring My City Through Art. Okay, this is what I usually do when we have um, our students and we're doing this program, you don't have to. So you don't have to put Exploring My City Through Art. You can come up with your own creative thing. Now remember, we're talking about New Bedford. So maybe you might want to say Exploring New Bedford, or you might want to say My New Bedford, or New Bedford's History, or The Arts of New Bedford, or I mean, you have so many options and you're all so creative, so you could come up with something like that. 
But I would like that one side to talk about um, our city, like what the program is and what type of work you'll be doing. So you can easily do that. Exploring my city through art, if you wanna name it, the name of the program, you can do that, okay? Now, on this piece of paper, now this is my scrap paper. Now, you should always have scrap paper on with you so that you can do your sketches, studies. I never encourage students to just go directly on their final. This is our final, but do you notice how I put these two rectangles? Well, this represents either side, the, the front and the back. F for front, B for back, okay? And then I'd like you to take your pencil and decide what you're gonna do. So you come up with an idea. So the front is gonna have your name, right? I'm gonna do it in, in Sharpie just so that you can see. But I would like you to do it in pencil because you can change your mind as you go along, okay? Now, think about how you wanna write your name. Do you wanna write your name diagonal right across? Do you wanna write your name like at an arch? You wanna write your name in bubble letters? You wanna write your name in block letters? What about cursive? So many options, and this is all about you. This portfolio is portfolio design, all about you. I am gonna write my name in a curve. So I'm gonna put a curve the line, and I'm gonna write my name. My name is Allison. And when you write your name, you wanna make sure that you space it out, okay? So Allison, and then I can put designs. Um, you can write anything else you want. My portfolio, my art, okay? And remember, when you're doing it on the final, you want it to look beautiful. You wanna really take your time with the letters, whether it's gonna be bubble or block or whatever, and think about the colors you wanna use, all this, okay? Then this one, you could just say New Bedford. Or you can write the whole thing, exploring my city through art. Or I've seen people do this, I heart New Bedford. <laughs> now you're gonna have a combination of words and images. I wanna see drawings. So this is where you would sketch you know, something that you like. You can do stars, hearts, whatever. If you want to do something, New Bedford, if you want to draw something that you think represents New Bedford, you can do that as well, okay? So the front one is all about you. It could be stuff that represents you, anything you like. You know, I had students draw ice cream cones, <laughs> draw the beach, draw a, a cartoon character that they love, anything on that front front part of your portfolio, it's all about you. Your name and all the things you love. On the other side, it's all about the program, New Bedford. So something about New Bedford needs to be here. The name New Bedford, or you can do this long name of the program, Exploring My City Through Art. Everybody got it? Good. So the main thing is creating your sides, your envelope, you have that and now it's time to design remember you're gonna have a piece of sketch paper you're gonna sketch your design when you're finished you're sketching your designs that is when you're gonna start decorating okay all right now I want to show you some examples of students portfolios okay here's this one look at that how beautiful so this student had a separate piece of white paper, okay? And they did a whole beautiful um, drawing using markers and Sharpies, right? This one says, welcome to my portfolio. And it has a big face with eyes and a smiley face there, a nice big sun, okay? So they did a separate drawing and painting um, design on a piece of paper and then stuck it right on top. You notice this portfolio is black. So if they were to draw it and color it in, you wouldn't see the colors. So they took a piece of white paper, and did their design, right? Good. On top of that, they did more. 
and did letters and stuck in individual letters out okay this is old so some parts were ripping off already but did you see this is what a composition is composing the different pieces that you want in your portfolio okay where am I going to put my name where I'm going to put my images that is composition composing it that's why we want to think about it first on our sketch papers before we do okay good now this one says something else because this one wasn't for the class exploring my city but it says kids and teens artworks okay so this one I have all the kids and teen artworks that I teach in here so portfolios for everybody everybody can use these portfolios now these examples of the portfolios I'm going to show you now is from this class exploring my city through art so this part look at how beautiful it's almost like a Sun all these colors here and this student used um, oil pastels for that she put a big circle and wrote the words exploring my city through art she also wrote it here exploring my city through art as you can see the duct tape it was the same duct tape I was using she used pieces of um, wool look at this you can use anything you want three-dimensional things popping off and flat two-dimensional okay good so this is the side for exploring my city through art New Bedford and then this is her side so this is her personal side there's no right and wrong you can add as many things you like so the student has their name here and all these designs look at this little fuzzy ball here an eye googly eye we have leaves like four leaves a piece of foam core with different circles you you know it's really up to you look at all of these objects and they're stuck onto it so that's collage you're taking something you're sticking it on now you could also see look at this a handle this is very sturdy and how is it attached you would think that you would have to do all these staplings you could if you want but the duct tape is so strong so a strip of duct tape here and a strip of duct tape inside got it here and inside so pretty much straightforward at this point it's just about decorating and having fun okay good here's another one so this is a side with the name so we have the name here this artist is Emily she wrote it with marker but the E for Emily is collage this is strips of paper like a strip here a strip here she cut out strips and made the letter E isn't that lovely this is just of a pattern paper painted paper just and this is actually paint so old painted papers that you would have and I'm sure you might have that old artwork you might want to cut up and you can make collages out of them and then she drew with a sharpie and then colored it in all her different designs the Sun and stars and diamonds anything that you want to design your portfolio remember it's your portfolio so you choose the colors you design the way you want okay you make it the way you would like it to look then this is the side with New Bedford and it says exploring my city in big through my art so exploring my city through my art there we have hearts like balloons with the strings oh look at we have this bunny here okay stars all sorts of things right so that's what you're going to do so if you don't have anything to make a handle that is fine you don't have to have a handle I showed you the ones without handles and you can just have them or you can decide you know anything that I show you here today you can you know here today and all the other classes you take your time and you adapt it to you you find new ways of doing things okay that's what our classes are all about 
So have fun making your portfolios and I'll see you soon.